As part of the broader CE transformation, CE Operations is adopting and transitioning to new management styles. Using the metaphor of installations as a maintenance battlefield, we can describe our strategic plan of attack using a campaign approach as illustrated in these next few slides. And please note these are general themes, not all encompassing to ops. This briefing will largely focus on operations transformation efforts divided into three principal areas of attack, preventive maintenance, work management, and requirements and optimization. Success on a modern maintenance battlefield with fewer troops, less equipment, and dwindling supplies demands a campaign plan to synchronize a way forward to help us achieve enterprise goals. This strategy is largely framed by Program Action Directive 1203, Implementation of Enterprise-Wide Civil Engineer Transformation. The end objective, our hill to take so to speak, is optimized life cycle efficiency by placing the right amount of resources at the right time to provide the least risk to the mission while being the most cost-effective course of action. Each column reflects a few of the many ops flight tactical action areas at each base for general advancement along the pre-initial operational capability, or IOC, to post-IOC timeline shown at the bottom. Note this campaign covers four to five years. The first column reflects some common reference points from which to launch our campaign. It's important to make sure the RIPI inventory is well identified in order to know exactly what we have to maintain. Consistent use of standardized PM task lists, replacing the old IWIMS maintenance action sheets, will result in effective scheduling and in some cases free up time for other corrective maintenance. We've taken initial steps with ACC and PACAF support to identify PM lists for those Air Force assets that cleanly match the commercial environment using RS means. The new work priorities should focus on responding to emergencies and a scheduling emphasis on preventive maintenance, sorts reportable troop construction projects, sustainment corrective maintenance, and, if time permits, enhancement projects. Several major AMPs and sub-AMPs, Airfield and Transportation Networks AMP, Utilities AMP, and the Service Contract sub-AMPs, now fall under the operations flight, specifically in requirements and optimization. Informed discussions between craftsmen, engineers, and condition assessment teams will better determine overall base work requirements and where ops work resources should best be applied for optimal return on investment. Sustainment management systems, such as builders' facility condition assessments, are like radar systems showing us inbound maintenance threats. Beginning to monitor and analyze life cycle models will enable us to develop corrective maintenance targeting solutions, whether by in-house or contract. Operations craftsmen will be the vanguard eyes and ears recce teams supplementing recurring in-depth assessment teams to keep this intel current. We hope to import some of this assessment data into Tririga upon conversion, so good data is key. Moving along the timeline reveals a convergence of operations activities when we hit the six-month warning order for each base's legacy to Tririga conversion. Note that the forward edge of this line will vary as not all bases have the same movement orders. We expect it'll take about 18 months to get CE-wide initial operational capability. As a reminder, other CE forces in real property, cost accounting, energy, and project management will have similar IOC preparation work. To jumpstart data in Tririga, bases will be asked to provide PM scheduling information using a conversion database. This same Microsoft Access database will pull builder and ACES RP information combined with ops manual entry to be authoritative RIPI source feeding Tririga. Other data-related actions include IWIM's data cleaning of ops work records following detailed conversion business rules already established. Material Control will use a Microsoft Access database to capture consumable supply inventory for conversion from CMAS to Tririga. Live training to power users and computer-based training for all other users will also be deployed very close to the conversion IOC. Training extends to facility managers who will be using Tririga directly to load all but emergency requests for CE service. You will also be working the necessary documentation to establish user access to Tririga and the associated user roles and permissions which define the Tririga experience for each person. 
Because Triregate will manage cost accounting across the board, you'll need to get your service contract information loaded as well. Reimbursable customers will be billed directly based on system information, not individual spreadsheets we may be using today. All of these efforts will place a huge demand on CE staff, not just in operations. While there may be some overarching publicity, each installation will need to work with their customers to potentially slow or stop certain kinds of work just prior to conversion and slowly ramp back up to full speed once the conversion is completed successfully. Over a long weekend, the base maintenance battlefield will go quiet as your conversion completes and Tririga comes to life. These early weeks post-IOC will be the true fog of war test for civil engineers. Tririga will be like a new command and control system for the battle to combat installation emergencies, asset degradation, and requests for new installation infrastructure. The dynamic nature of this game changer in the maintenance AOR will present enormous challenges to the field and our customers. Critical to success will be getting past boot camp Tririga training for both CE staff and customer facility managers and rapidly learning and sharing lessons on how best to employ this new system in our forward moving campaign. Expect a rash of playbook updates to keep pace. The Tririga Help Desk will also be learning. In the early months after IOC, the focus will be on data cleanup, not just on asset records but on stabilizing our work groups and user roles. All of CE will get stick time by entering records by hand from the brownout period and adding missing data or additional data detail. Lots of work will be needed to get our PM work plans in order from an initial IOC scheduling perspective and then settle down to a more balanced use of time as we get the scheduling tools in Tririga mastered. With a year or so of PM experience under our belt, R&O should be starting some analysis to see if PM frequencies pay a dividend in impacts to correct the maintenance. As Tririga usage matures, Ops will gain the ability to shift from facility level to building system and component level priorities for tactical in-house maintenance. We'll also be able to analyze and model at a much more in-depth level in order to figure out smarter ways of doing business at the corporate level. AMP and SubAMP managers, now fed a continuous stream of information from Tririga Command and Control, will have a new vantage point to observe the installation and direct sustainment activities, in-house or contract, earning the right bang for the buck on overall Air Force integrated priority lists. According to the campaign timeline, our maintenance forces will be closing on the end objective and can begin reinforcing positions and performing mopping up operations. If we have done our job well up to this point, two years after base IOC, we can really exploit Tririga's power. Tririga will significantly improve analysis and modeling by both shops and R&O. We can analyze where we are spending money and man hours and determine if we are doing things the smartest way and balancing risk to asset lifecycle performance. We'll also move from preventive just-in-time maintenance to predictive maintenance, which is a proactive approach using advanced diagnostics to tell when system health is just beginning to deteriorate. This shift to enhanced corrective maintenance scheduling has the potential to keep infrastructure assets in combat fit states for longer periods of time at overall greater reliability and with fewer resources. Handheld technology will regularly be used by technicians at job sites and condition assessment teams. Barcoded building components will allow quick retrieval of job tickets, health assessment, and opportunities for troops to alert the operations engineering intel cell and senior leadership about problems and trends. Reach back to PM task lists, technical information, technician field notes, or pictures of previous conditions will give technicians access to a complete maintenance and repair history of that component. Asset and component priorities will further mature into effective resourcing decision enablers for the daily employment of maintenance technicians across the installation. Budgeting and material acquisition will be more tightly integrated to long-term asset management decisions guided by Tririga and Builder Intel to stem surprises on the maintenance battlefront. We're confident we can take the asset management hill. Getting there will be a long journey demanding strong leadership and resistance to deviations from the plan. Frankly, we'll expect a few setbacks along the way. Any grueling campaign must anticipate and be prepared to counter attack. 
Eventually, Tririga data collected back at the time of your IOC will provide the information we need to provide even more sophisticated maintenance. Knowing how much has been spent on a component, how many man hours were expended, mean times between failure, and the age of the component will help highlight future requirements and predict the optimal time to replace a component or even a building. Change is never easy, but being able to perform work efficiently and in a cost-effective manner benefits everyone from the Magcoms to the individuals in the base shops. We will be leaner and smarter in the way we work and we can spend the right money at the right time on the right project. The objective is clear and you are on the front lines to make this happen.